Hello guys, welcome to Quick Tricks. In a previous video, we saw that what are the stages it needs to get uh, for an instruction to get executed. There were five instructions that were in, uh, instruction fetch, instruction decode, execute instruction, memory access, and write back, right? So here, here we'll be executing two instructions, i1 and i2, which are add and subtract, alright? So we'll be uh, you know, analyzing that what time it takes to execute these two instructions. So here we'll be assuming that uh, each phase takes single cycle, all right? In real, it is not true. Just for the sake of understanding, we are using that uh, each phase takes only one cycle, all right? And let us assume that a single cycle takes a time of four microseconds per cycle, okay? So now for I1, there will be five phases, which are IF, ID, execution, memory access, and write back, right? So there will be five cycles total. So for from first, in first cycle, it will be instruction fetch. In second cycle, it will be instruction decode. In third cycle, it will be execution. In fourth cycle, it will be memory access. And in fifth cycle, it will be write back. Now, in for exe uh, execution of I1 is over at fifth cycle, all right? So now for executing I2, at 6th cycle it will be IF, instruction fetch, on 7th cycle it will be instruction decode, in 8th cycle it will be execution, in 9th cycle it will be memory access, and in 10th cycle it will be write back. So for executing I1 and I2, two instructions will need 10 cycles. Alright, so let us assume, uh, let us you know calculate what is the time taken by these two instructions to get executed. So it will be uh, total 10 cycles are there and each cycle takes 4 microseconds, right? So it will be 10 into 4 equals to 40 microseconds. So in general, if we write, it will be uh, 5 cycles per instruction. So there will be 10 cycles, alright? So it will be number of instruction, n is number of instruction into k, that is number of cycles, and into tp. So this is the time taken by the instructions to get executed. So here we can see that while uh, after you know uh, instruction fetch, there on second cycle it will be instruction decode, exactly right. But on second cycle we can use IF because IF is free now. So for uh, you know we need instruction fetch for second instruction as well. So with this free cycle we can use it for instruction fetch of instruction two. So are you getting? Uh, I'll be explaining in a better way. So here, uh, you know, we can see that while executing instruction decode of I1, the instruction fetch hardware is free. All of these are hardware actually. So at the time of instruction decode of instruction 1, IF is free. So in that time, we can do instruction fetch of instruction 2 rather than wasting a single whole cycle. Alright? So what we'll be doing that is uh, at second cycle, we'll be doing IF, that is instruction fetch of second instruction. So it will be like, you know, if we complete this, it will be, so in execution it will be instruction decode, after fetch it is decode, then it is execution, then it is memory access, at fifth cycle and at sixth cycle, we'll be completing both the instructions. So you can see the difference, because uh, while, so you know, what we did is, this is called pipelining actually because we are you know minimizing the time of execution of both the instructions here we uh, got 10 cycles to be executed for both these instructions so if we use pipeline it will be only 6 cycles and if we consider the time so 6 into 4 is 24 microseconds only so rather than 40 microseconds we can complete it in 24 microseconds so this is the difference between you know pipelining and non-pipelining. Here what we did was here you know while executing ID of means, uh, instruction decode of instruction one, we can use instruction fetch for instruction two. All right. So instruction fetch of instruction two we can do in second cycle. Just like that at execution time ID is free because on second cycle ID got completed. Okay. So in second in third cycle we can we can do instruction decode of I two. Because here instruction decode hardware is free, alright. So this is what we can do to minimize the time. 
so that instruction get completed very easily and in a less time so this was all about pipelining and non pipelining in uh, next lecture i'll be you know listing down the limitations of pipelining and non pipelining as well one second because uh, let it be clear in your mind because uh, now what we did was we used every different cycle for every different phase of instructions in non pipelining architecture because you know there is no kind of parallel execution of any of the phases in both the instructions before what we did i am telling about all right so then after what we did was you know uh, this cycle is free for instruction fetch so we used instruction fetch hardware on the second cycle so because of that we got less number of cycles for execution of single instructions so this is the advantage of pipelining architecture before what we did was non pipelining because there there was no kind of parallel execution of instructions or phases you can say all right so these were advantages and disadvantages in next tutorial i'll be explaining you know and listing down all the uh, limitations and advantages of uh, parallel means uh, that means pipeline execution and non pipeline execution thank you thanks for watching the video guys keep watching keep sharing if you like the video and want to watch more press here don't forget to hit the subscribe button and like button and if you have any doubts related to any other topics then do mention in our comment section thank, thank you, you.